Oregon's primary is less than a month away, and if you want to be able to vote in more of the races, you'll need to pick a political party by next week. That's because Oregon is closed primaries, which means you can only vote within the party you're registered with. Democrats can only pick Democratic candidates. Republicans can only pick Republican candidates. And neither can cross over and vote for the other party's nominees. And if you're an independent or registered with a minor party or a non-affiliated voter, you can only vote in the nonpartisan races. Oregon is one of 15 states that have closed or partially closed primaries. In some states, only one party has closed their primary. Under Oregon law, the parties could choose to have open primaries, but they haven't. There are, there are arguments on both sides of keeping primaries closed. Supporters say registered party members are more invested in their candidates, and they worry that non-party members could try to sabotage the party by voting for a weaker candidate. Opponents say primaries should be open to everyone in a democracy, and that closed primaries produce more extreme candidates because they're only trying to appeal to their party's base. Right now, there's an ongoing effort to open up Oregon's primary. The group All Oregon Votes has been trying to get a ballot measure for several election cycles now. We talked with Michael Calcagno, one of the volunteers behind the effort here. So closed primaries restrict voters from participating in that May election, which is a crucial stage of our democracy, who we elect to lead us and the solutions that they bring forth to the public sphere. Those are so important that all voters are heard. And in Oregon today, two out of every three elections, whether it's Congress or our state legislature, two out of every three elections, the winners are decided in the primary. And when we restrict voting rights for independent voters, we're basically saying, no thanks, you don't get to participate in this most important stage of voting, but you can participate in November. The effort isn't going too well though. Calcagno and All Oregon Votes say they aren't getting enough signatures to get the ballot, get on the ballot this year. They had the same problem in 2022, but they're planning to keep up the effort and try again in 2026. The last two times open primary measures did make it to the ballot, they failed in 2014 and 2008. But Oregon actually has a much larger number of independent and non-affiliated voters, and that's growing, than people registered to a party. So the biggest chunk of voters in the state will be left out of primary voting. As of this month, there are about 994,000 registered Democrats, or about 32% of voters. There are 722,000 Republicans, that's about 24% of voters. 1,110,000 people are non-affiliated voters, and 204,000 people are registered with minor parties. Altogether, 43% of voters in Oregon don't belong to a major party. Calcagno says open primaries would allow voters to look more critically at the candidate and not the party. The great thing about open primaries is they, they don't tip the balance in favor of Republicans or in favor of Democrats. We know that independents are free thinkers. They are swing voters. They decide based on the person, not the party. And we know from a lot of studies that a majority of those independent voters truly do hold um, more progressive values that are reflective of the state. So in general, we're not going to be drastically changing the outcomes of elections. We're just going to be unshackling politicians from always preaching the party line and never reaching across the aisle. Our closed primary system rewards politicians who are there to score political points instead of who are there to solve real problems with solutions that are acceptable to both sides of the aisle. Now, if you're not registered as a Democrat or a Republican, you'll still get on a ballot, still get a ballot, that is. You just won't have a lot of those big races on there. If you do want to join one of those parties and vote in their primary, you have the chance until next Tuesday, the 30th, to do so. You can go online to OregonVotes.gov register or go to your elections office. In the general election in November, you will still be able to vote for whichever party you like, of course, no matter your party registration. So what do you think about this? Should Oregon primaries be opened up to everyone or are they better off staying closed for the reasons we shared earlier and only letting registered party members vote? Let us know what you think. The email address, of course, the story at KGW.com or leave us a voicemail 303-690-3000.
503-226-5090.